It's time for another independent story, and this time it's going to be about a group of superhero cats. Keep in mind, not every comic book is for every person, but I personally found this fun and adventurous, and I figured that there may be some other people out there who may enjoy it. We're just going to tell you the beginning of the story, so if you want it, I'll put all manners of purchasing this book down below. A story begins at the Quest Family Observatory overlooking Stellar City. Inside lives the cat named Cassiopeia, and she loves to read. But lately, her family has been struggling with something that she herself can't quite figure out. But before before we get into that story, we should probably meet the heroes of this tale. First is the mysterious Midnight who quietly saves the world by stopping burglars as they try to rob homes, for he is the paws of justice. Second is Belle. She has the special ability to read the humans' minds, so whenever there's a person trying to take advantage of someone, she's always there to stop them. Next up is Rocket, who happens to think that he's from another planet, and he tries to find a way back home. He's also extremely fast. Providing the muscle is Rocco. He's so big that he can even beat up humans who prey on the weak. And finally, there's Ace, the leader of the group of hero cats and the all-around soldier ready to serve and protect. Which brings us back to Cassiopeia, the cat who can read human words and can always be found spending time with her brother reading to him. You rarely ever see the two apart until the day that Cassiopeia's favorite author, Lillian Clark, stopped by the bookstore across the street for a book signing. From there, Cassiopeia purred her way into Lillian's life and soon home. As the weeks passed by, Cassiopeia settled in nicely. But not long after that, Lillian's niece, Amelia, went into space and was never heard from again. Seeing the family's heartache, Lillian decided to bring her to the Quest family to help comfort them in their time of need. Amelia's husband, Stanley, thought that it might be a good idea to help distract their daughter, Susie. And when Cassiopeia was brought home, she fit right in. As time passed, Cassiopeia could tell that there was something different about this family. Sometimes at night, neither Stanley nor Susie would be home, getting into who knows what kind of trouble. Not long after that, though, the humans with superpowers started the battle in Stellar City, just like the comic books. It was up to the hero cats to help fight these menacing minions. No matter the season, they are always on call, like when Belle learned the truth about the hottest selling toy Destructo Bot and how it was actually programmed to steal children's presents. But it's not all work and adventures. Sometimes the hero cats like to kick back and have fun. And when it comes down to it, no matter if they're battling space aliens or watching scary space alien movies, the one certain thing is that the Hero Cats are there for each other. Her name is Cassiopeia. She's a member of the Hero Cats, and her story has just begun. Late one night over in the Stellar City Air and Space Museum, Belle heads out to see Ace since he's been neglecting his human family and has been throwing himself completely into the job. As she walks by a space pod, Ace calls out asking what's on her mind, and Belle says that she's had some concerns regarding these colorfully dressed humans who have been wrecking the city. Ace tells her that she should probably come up there so that they can discuss the matter. The humans refer to them as superheroes. He goes on to state that this Galaxy Man and Cosmic Girl seem to be defending their homes much like they do the Hero Cats. Belle shouts that she doesn't trust them, they hide behind masks and no one knows anything about them. Plus, she can't even read their minds, and the monsters didn't start coming until they showed up. Ace looks down and tells her not to worry. He has Midnight looking into the capes and asks what's the report on the monsters. Belle tells him that she's found plenty. It seems like there's a troubled boy named Johnny Arcado who's behind everything. He's a reclusive type who stayed in playing video games all day until a strange satellite crashed outside of his window. After bringing it inside, he tinkered with it and he hooked it up to his game console, and he actually found a way to use the alien satellite to bring video games to life. Unfortunately, because of Johnny's twisted nature, he's been bringing the monsters to life so that they can defeat Galaxy Man. Ace says that he remembers Cassiopeia reading the paper and stating that Galaxy Man had won that day. And with Cassie's help, they... Belle stops him, saying, That's also what she came to talk about. Why is it that she's being assigned to the team so quickly? It took forever for them to even trust her. One successful mission and Cassiopeia has full access to everything? Ace says that Cassiopeia's ability to read is critical on the field. She's also smart, making her a good soldier. Belle cuts him off again, stating that she can see the truth. He has feelings for her. The girl has no business being a part of his army. Ace tries to say that he would not include her if she couldn't handle it, but Belle leaves saying that she has come to say what she needed. Just be careful. She doesn't want him to lose another soldier. The next morning, Cassiopeia and Midnight keep watch on a building, and Cassiopeia asks what exactly are they supposed to be doing here. Without looking back, he tells her, just keep quiet and look out. A few moments pass, and Cassiopeia asks why is he so tense? Was he picked on as a kitten? Was he a part of some kind of experiment? Midnight tells her, I don't like criminals. Like, I really don't like criminals. Midnight thinks back to when he was a stray kitten living on the poorer side of town. There was a family there who was struggling, and their daughter would always come to give him milk. It was a good family, but one night they were robbed, and without being able to afford things as is, they had to leave, and he never got to see them again. Back on the roof, Midnight sighs, telling Cassiopeia, I just hate criminals. That's all you need to know. Cassiopeia says that she gets it, and that doesn't explain why they are watching the humans that she lives with. Midnight asks, 
How well do you actually know them? And Cassiopeia says that she knows them well enough that they are not criminals. Every day they put on a brave face and Stanley stays up in his observatory watching the skies for his wife. She was lost and that's why she lives with them. Cassie snaps asking, who are you to question her? And then she turns back to see Midnight fighting two of Johnny's monsters. A little while later after defeating the monsters, Cassiopeia and Midnight meet back with Ace and Rocket to report to Belle their findings. But as the group walks up to Belle's porch, Midnight notices a few of the monsters hiding in the bushes. Ace quickly turns back to help and between him and Midnight, they stop the monster from coming up front. One more monster crawls from the house, but Rocket knocks a potted plant on it, destroying it. As it blows up, a coin pops up, and Cassiopeia runs over to check on it. Belle says the tokens there go to Johnny's command center. Perhaps they should take them along and head over there. So they all walk down the street to Johnny's house, and they sneak into his room where they find an arcade machine. Ace says this must be the source of the monsters, and Cassiopeia begins to put the coins into the machine. As she starts to read the text, Belle hops out the window and says that there are more monsters coming, and she's going to help the others. So the two of them are on their own. Ace asks what does the screen say, and Cassiopeia says they move the joystick to move, and once they defeat the three levels, Kairu the Crusher is theirs to command. Outside, Bell joins Midnight and Rocket as they fight off waves of monsters heading their way. Through the monsters, a giant dragon flies down as Rocco is trying to scratch its head. Suddenly, the dragon falls straight into the ground and everyone runs over to check what happened. But in the puff of smoke, the dragon disappears and Rocco sits on a pile of coins smiling and he says, Hey guys! Cassiopeia jumps out to tell everyone that they need to hurry and leave. Kairu the Crusher is on its way. The giant begins to walk by, stomping on all of the monsters and also the house. Rocco shouts, That is awesome! But Rocket tells him that Ace was inside of the house. House. Everyone runs over to the house calling out for Ace, and through the wreckage, a white paw springs out. Ace pulls himself out asking if they won, and Cassiopeia tells him, You bet they did. Belle tells Cassiopeia that it looks like they wouldn't be able to have done this without her, and she purrs telling her, Aw. Rocket asks what about Johnny Arcade, and Ace says that he wasn't there, but without his powers, he's no longer a threat to the city. So it's game over for Johnny! The next morning, Stanley and Susie sit at the dining room table while Stanley reads the paper article that Galaxy Man and Cosmic Girl defeated the video game villain. Nanny Maria starts to serve breakfast and says that it's nice to join them for breakfast since they weren't around for dinner last night. Stanley coughs and Maria asks where was he, and he begins to mumble that he was out... mumble mumble. Susie begins to feed Cassiopeia some of the bacon strips, and Maria tells her that she really shouldn't be feeding the animal table scraps. Susie says it's alright. Cassiopeia is such a sweet cat. She deserves a treat every once in a while. Now, like I said, this is just a fun and adventurous tale, and they go on a lot of adventures, these hero cats, and it's a long-running series, actually, that you may or may not have heard about. So if you love cats and you love superheroes, why not check this book out? I'll give you all the links down below. You can subscribe to this channel to find more comic books that you may not know exist, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Storian.